In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go and be seated. I thought about starting my sermon by saying, in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then just being quiet for like a minute. Um, I realized people would just turn off the live stream if I did that. Uh, that, And that the point would be lost because they would think something was frozen. But why is that, that they would think something is wrong? Um, It's because we we have an expectation. We have an expectation for what happens next, and, 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 and we're moving along. With, with our Eucharist service, and so we just have an expectation for what comes. And Jesus is really telling us to press into expectation here. To, he, he's trying to build up an expectation of what will happen, and he sets up a really uh, difficult tension for us, because just like if I stood here and was quiet for a minute, people would turn off the live stream, Right? What happens is when we're in this place of expectation for a long period of time, often it's easy for us to relax and to say, I guess my expectations are not going to be met. And the tension between the imminence of Christ's judgment he asks us, he asks us to live with and this long, <coughs> drawn-out church age is really difficult. See, Jesus is in the middle of his discourse for the Mount of Olives right now. Um, we read a chunk of the first part in Advent. We would have read it way back in Advent. We'll read Mark's version of this sermon this coming Advent in a few weeks. But he's in the middle of the, what's called the Olivet Discourse when he's preaching about the end of this age. And a short reminder, Mark 24, 36, or Matthew, I mean, I'm sorry, Matthew 24, 36 is this shift in the narrative between between when he's talking about the fall of the temple in Jerusalem, and all of a sudden he says, but concerning that day and that hour, we have no, no one knows, not the Son or the Father. So they, they've had this experience of hearing not one stone will be on top of each other, of one another on a temple. They say, when will these things be? And he says, none of you will pass away until these things happen, right? So AD 70 is what he's talking about, this time when the temple will be destroyed and the judgment of the Jewish sacrificial system and religious system will take place. And then he says, but concerning that day and that hour, no one knows. No one knows the time. No one knows the place. And although Jesus continually asks us to be ready, he leaves open the possibility that we might be waiting a really long time. First does that in 2448 when the wicked servant starts to get drunk on the master's wine because there's been a long delay. But he picks up that same theme in the story of the virgins here, where they had this long delay. All of them had fallen asleep. And what a strange tension Jesus is leading us into, because he's leading us into a tension of being ready for something that could happen at any moment, and yet at the same time telling us. There might be a long time that you're waiting to be ready. And indeed, it has been 2,000 years, (laughs) and still we're not there. And a long delay can lead to complacency, can't it? A long delay can lead us to be complacent. And and there's something natural and something that's uncondemned about settling into the fact that there's been a long delay in this parable, right built into this parable. All of the virgins, all of the the bridesmaids that were going to welcome this husband and wife into the city, right, all of them fell asleep. (laughs) And, and, And that wasn't what was condemned. Like, it was a long night, and it was normal that they would fall asleep. And so the ones who were ready didn't stay awake. They fell asleep with the other bridesmaids. And there is a settling in that takes place. The church has done a certain level of settling in, of flourishing in the land that we're in, and of seeking the good of the land they're in. Kind of like the exilic people were called to seek the good of whatever land they were sent to. The church are called to seek the good of whatever land that they're in, and to, and to settle in to what might be a long interval. And it's important to know, like, 
these wise virgins, what their function is. Uh, these bridesmaids, they're not just being mean with, with this settling in. When, when they're asked by the unwise virgins or bridesmaids to come in, they were going to process with light, with, with lamps full of oil, that were going to were, were gonna lead the, the bride and her bridegroom into the city. And giving some of the oil, if they didn't, when they said, we don't have enough for, enough for you and for uh, us, what would happen was all the lamps would go out. I mean, if they gave all their oil away, then they, they all would not have enough to, to, to make the trip, to make the procession, right? And so they sent them to go buy, to, to go buy more. But there's this, this settling in, this sleeping that's taking place of all of them, this settling in for a long age, and yet this sense that this one group isn't ready. They're not ready. And I think that leads us to the important point of Jesus' parable. The thing that he's really driving out is that a lack of readiness can lead to being locked out of the feast. This is probably a surprising moment in the parable. Uh, the story seems to be going along fine, except you'd be a little surprised if some people didn't bring an extra flask of oil along. You might be a little surprised by that, but the big surprise, the big aha moment in the parable is, why is he not letting them in? <laughs> I mean, what, what would be the big deal to open the door to them, right? These people who are running late. They're calling on the bridegroom, Lord, Lord. And they're using language, when we see that surprising fact, then we see language like, Lord, Lord, language is supposed to turn our attention to the end of the age. We're seeing just kind of this hinge of, hey, what are we really supposed to be thinking about right now? We're, we're, what's being communicated by this surprising point in the story is that it's possible to get locked out of the wedding feast because of lack of readiness. That the wedding feast that we are invited into, we can miss out on it if we're not ready. I think there's two lessons from that fact for us. Lesson one is that we need to be vigilant and ready. I don't know about you, but a long delay can get to me sometimes. Right? Just a long delay. It feels like uh, any time, like, uh, you know, when I'm most capable... If, if 10 minutes, like, so 15 minutes before this service, we had a fire alarm, <laughs> which, is, which is why things feel a little haphazard, why I'm bringing bread out um, after the gospel reading is because we had a fire alarm, like, right before we started. And I, I, I can do really well at not wasting time when we have five minutes to get something done. It's like, it's time, I don't have time to waste, it's time to go for it. But I'm telling you, I, if, if I have three hours before I need to be somewhere, I can end up running late to where I have five minutes to be somewhere because I've wasted time, because a long delay can get to me. And I think the people of God can fall into that. It's been a long time. We've been waiting a long time. And we can look and we can say, hey, maybe this isn't coming like, or, or at least I know I got tomorrow because I, had, I did have tomorrow yesterday and I'll probably have tomorrow. And I, I got tomorrow to get things right with God. I got tomorrow to take care of, to take care of things. And we can kind of live in that place because you probably got tomorrow. You're probably going to be okay. Sometimes I feel like I have forever. But the fact is, there's going to be a moment where you don't have tomorrow. It could be because the final judgment consummates. Or it could be the moment of our death that we don't know is coming. And Jesus is telling his people to be the type of people that recognize this could be it. I could stand before God at this very moment and account for my life. And I need to be ready. And he's saying people, my people are people that are ready for that moment. And to live with that type of expectation. So what do we do in the meantime? Well, it's simple. We love God. And we love our neighbor as ourselves, right? We love God by keeping his commandments. Those who love me keep, it, keep my commandments, he says. We love God by obeying him. And we love our neighbor. We love God in our neighbor, the image of God in our neighbor, um, by taking care of their needs, by doing what we read about in Amos, right? By letting justice flow, uh, the, by, by taking care of the poor and the outcasts and the needy. And in fact, God tells us that, that he hates our religious worship 
if justice is not being done in our land, right? So we love God by keeping his commandments and by worshiping him, and we love our neighbor as ourselves. But I think related to that neighbor love, we can look at the second lesson, is that the people, people in our lives can get locked out of the wedding feast. It's supposed to lead to an urgency and evangelism we love our neighbor, and we know that some people can get locked out of the wedding feast. There can be a moment that is too late for them. This should lead us to urgency in evangelism. Now, there's a certain level of settling in that we should do. Sometimes we learn to do evangelism the way we would if a plane were crashing, like, 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 the plane's going down. We're all going to die. I'm going to have a very urgent message to share with my neighbor who doesn't know Jesus, right? I'm going to say, like, now is the time. Like, you don't have another moment. It's the time. Like, we're going down in this thing. You need to get right with God, like, immediately. And we don't have an extra minute for, to talk about it. Like, get right with God. Receive it, forgiveness. We're going down in this thing, right? Now, we're not meant to do evangelism always that way, with that level of urgency. However... I think a lot of us, just, just like uh, unwise virgins, the wise virgins settle in and recognize, hey, we don't always have, it's okay to sleep right now. But the unwise virgins weren't ready, and they didn't deal with the reality that they could be locked out of the feast or that others could be locked out of the feast. And I think God is telling us to remember that people that you love and people that I love can be locked out of the feast. They must turn to God. They must turn to Christ. Or there can be a moment that is too late, whether that's because the final consummation of judgment or whether that's because the end of their lives. The fact is there, there's a moment that is coming and we don't know when it is, when it will be too late for people in our lives. And that should color our evangelism so much Friendship evangelism is done, which is neither friendship nor evangelism because no one ever gets around to sharing the gospel. Because, because we, we walk around be, acting like we have forever and that just me living my life is such an obvious testimony to the gospel that, of course, people around me are coming to Jesus. But, that, but I, I've, as I've asked you guys before and I'll ask you guys again, really, honestly, how many people have come to Christ just by watching you live your life. They, they just watched you live and they bowed their knee to King Jesus. That's never happened to me. And if that hasn't happened to you, we have to recognize this is too urgent to be waiting around like that and to say, no, we, we have to proclaim good news that there's a God who wants to reconcile them to him through his son Jesus, through the sacrifice he made for them for their sins. He wants to make them right with him. He loves them. He wants to make them his children. But there's a day coming when Jesus will return to judge the living and the dead. And that day will be too late. So if we love our friends, if we love our family, if we're truly friends doing friendship evangelism and we care about these people, we will tell them this. We will tell them the good news. That there's a God desires them. God had a lot to say to us in this, these short words, I think. I mean, he, he's telling us, even though there's been a long delay, we must be ready. We must live as if any moment could be the moment that we're called to give an account before God for our lives. And we must do the same with our neighbors, with our loved ones recognizing that there's, there is a day coming that will be too late. And so our love for them compels us, demands that we share good news with them, that we share with them that there is a God who desires to reconcile us to, to himself. May we be people who take seriously that a day is coming when the doors will be shut and love God and love our neighbor and proclaim good news to those who God's given us influence there's a day coming where we'll be too late. Amen.